Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our complimentary part of our course, uh, which is about the module structures uh, for the software architecture course you'll be taking on. So today uh, we'll be talking just a little bit more about the architecture. And uh, I will try to show you the architectural structures and the views, at least give you a brief idea about what are these all about. So if you look at to the board, board view we have here as the software architecture form, uh, what we have is we need several different types of uh, attributes or characteristics in order to have the software architecture work properly. To this end, most importantly, we need to understand that uh, we need to have soft skills for uh, implementing the software architecture. There should be several decisions to be made, and there will be uh, some correspondence between you and the stakeholders. There will be a technical writing sessions that needs to be done in a proper way. Uh, there will be uh, technologies such as DevOps, and you need to understand the development pipelines properly. Uh, you need to measure what you do as a basic part of the engineering which needs to be done by using some metrics. Some radiators needs to be known at this stage. Uh, there needs to be uh, visualizations uh, to be understood, like components and connector forms with different viewpoints. There needs to be some trade-offs and architecture characteristics. We call them ILITs. And trade-offs needs to be done with respect to performance versus security, for example. So these needs to be understood properly. And there will be an integration of the architecture with respect to the patterns of architecture, uh, like such as service-oriented architectures or some other integrations that needs to be done in a proper way. And uh, there will be some patterns and anti-patterns for design uh, things up front or uh, which needs to be crit uh, criticized at some stage as we follow two mostly agile principles in today's development landscapes. So let's start by seeing that uh, what we have here is mostly our work starts with the fact that we'll be trying to understand the requirements. So requirements needs to be understood. And these requirements needs to be a part of the entire scope of what we have at hand. So this should be something like we need to think about uh, as a whole, which should include performance. And for example, security. And scalability all the attributes that we think perhaps data should also be included here as a part of the requirements process needs to be extended with respect to several things. In other words, what we can say, we could be able to understand the non-functional requirements and the functional requirements. So functional requirements should have to be implemented for sure, but we need to understand that uh, most of the stakeholders are highly uh, interested in the non-functional requirements which needs to have the performance, security, or maybe related with these attributes as well. So let's start by thinking about a little bit more about the architecture in terms of a definition. So according to uh, common sense, uh, an understanding of the architecture, uh, it is an organizational set of organizational structure of components interacting using the interfaces. So a software architecture usually explained at any point on time, at any point in time, we need to understand that uh, software architectures are a set of organizational and structural components which needs to be interacting using the interfaces 
So there needs to be have interfaces for them to communicate. And there needs to be several trades off uh, while we implementing the non-functional requirements as they have uh, some, some of them might have priorities, some of them might not have priorities, but the share understanding is some sort of a common uh, understanding between uh, a group of stakeholders. So how the system should be divided, the components should also be understood by the developers, secondly, and the structure of the application. So the structure should be highly related with the factors like scalability, availability, and reliability. So these things should also be understood. So this is mostly important for understanding the basics of the architecture. And there would be several expectations of from the uh, architect. So this is a kind of a good work, but we need to understand that there needs to be some expectations from the architect. So the expectations should be like, firstly, an architect could be able to define the architecture and knows the design principles and guide the technical decisions for the firm. So define the architecture and knows the design principles. And guide the technical decisions for the firm, guide the firm. Secondly, an architect should constantly analyze the tech uh, technologies and software for, for recommend solutions for improvement. So all our documents are living documents, all our uh, diagrams or the other stuff should have to be uh, reflecting new things, technologies or other kind of recommendations for improvement. So constantly analyze. the technologies and uh, recommend solutions for improvement. And most not surprisingly perhaps, uh, he should keep or she should keep the current uh, technologies with latest trends and the technologies. So keep current keep investigating current and latest technologies or industrial uh, things that are important from the industrial viewpoint. And fourthly, as a fourth factor, an architect should ensure the diversity. So the implications of the diversity. So most of the software teams uh, are organized in a way that uh, there should be uh, diversity in people. So people who are having different personality characteristics or who are having different technical capabilities combined together to formalize better teams. So uh, according to my work life, most of the time what happens, you usually parachute into a project. Uh, and then what happens is you try to fix things up, uh, which are already being done or which needs to be done uh, after uh, your existence. So an architect shouldn't uh, live in a comfort zone. So what needs to be done is done without a comfort zone. And uh, there will be different diff business domain expertise for an architect to be understood and needs to be done. And ultimately, like for the first, uh, fourth step, we should have to say that ensure the team diversity. And the fifth one would be uh, an architect should possess team skills. Uh, an architect should work in a, as, a, as a leader, as a team, and as a collaborative form as a team and understand the political climate in a company. And uh, it is important to understand that stakeholders could be in conflict and some decisions might make some of them happy 
while the other is not very happy. So all your decisions as an architect could be challenged. So that's another important aspect. So the difference between the architecture and design is also hard to understand. So let's go for uh, process, process team skills. You should have to work with people who are sometimes hard to work with. And uh, the term, the design and architecture difference, like the difference between design and architecture uh, is a gray area. It's not very clean that which, what is goes to design, which goes to the architecture. So the architecture is ongoing process uh, during the entire life cycle uh, and today's technologies doesn't really uh, gives us the uh, idea that we should have to do the architecture up front. Instead, what happens is we usually uh, work on the architecture uh, during the entire life cycle. It's not a single process which finishes at the first uh, week or whatever it is required. So, for example, for an architect, uh, you need to think about whenever a system design is on, in place, what would be the current user load, for example? So how many users should have to use the system? Depending on this information, this would be a non-functional requirement. But it is quite important for us to establish a well-formed uh, system by using such information other than the functionalities that uh, needs to be provided. And what we can do is to, well, let's go further for uh, the structures and the other stuff just a little bit. So let's go for structures and we should provide some insights. So the structures as uh, based on the architecture plays an important role in our perspective on software. So, well, they, uh, because of the analytical and engineering power that they hold eventually. So each structure provides a perspective for reasoning about some of the relevant quality attributes. So that would be the module structure, perhaps, which embodies the modules to use other modules and strongly tied to ease which system parts can be extended or contracted. So it is a, a, some sort of a blueprint that you can see how these things combine together. Deployment structures are strongly tied with the achievements, performance, availability, and security goals. So if your deployment structure is properly done, so which it means that your performance is highly relevant with this uh, structure and your availability. So if you're deploying things in a way that, uh, un let's say an unstable OS operating system. So what happens or unsecure? So there would be several problems going further to way through our way. So there are some other module structures we can consider, which one is called this class module structures. The module units in the structures are known as classes. So the relationship is inherited from the instant relationship. This view supports reasoning about the collections of similar behavior capabilities like the classes that other classes inherit from, or sometimes there would be several differences based on the parameters, or some class structures allow one to reason about the reuse and incremental addition of functionality. If any documentation exists for a project that has followed an object-oriented analysis and design process, it's typically its structure. So, as you can see here, we could have classes which can be combined together to represent the system. This is a kind of a module structure that can be used and perhaps could be used as a proper way. So apart from this, so what would happen here is what needs to be done is to like layers structure. So all modules in a layer structure is called layers. So let me give you something like, this could be some one layer, layer one, one layer two, and layer three. So a layer is an abstract virtual machine 
an abstract virtual machine that provides a cohesive set of services through a managed interface. So there would be cohesive set of services through a managed interface here. And like these layers allow to use other layers in a strictly managed fashion. So one layer could use the other layer perhaps, but <coughs> perhaps cannot be able to use the, another layer or could be depending on our model, model or pattern that we're following. And in strictly layer, uh, strict layer systems, a layer is only allowed to use one single layer. It imbues a system with portability, which you can have portability if you consider like model view controller. So the view part will be GUI, perhaps. Then at this point, you can easily port from web to mobile. So you can just another, uh, you can create another view in, uh, which is convenient or which is compatible with the mobile mobile interfaces, while you have the system all constructed for a web, so you can easily construct uh, transform this uh, system to a mobile form. And like uh, the ability to change like underlying computing platforms is important in terms of the layer. So there would be other module structures known as the data. So the data model describes the static information most of the time in terms of data entities. Um, so for example, think about the banking system. What do we have in a banking system is uh, entities that will typically include an account a uh, customer and perhaps a loan. An account has could have several attributes such as uh, number, account number, type, banking, saving or checking, a uh, type of status, active, passive, and perhaps balance. So these are uh, the module structures with respect to the data. So data model can be described as like, this is like static information that's called. So there would be other uh, useful uh, structures that we can consider. Relationship with component and connector structures is attached like there would be a service structure. Let's go for like some useful component and connector structures. So a service structure. Uh, which are services that interoperate with each other by service coordination mechanisms such as SAOAP, uh, like currency concurrency structures, determines the opportunities with parallelism and the locations where resource contention may occur. Uh, so some units con can be considered as the components and connectors are the communication mechanisms that can need to be considered and the components are arranged in the logical threads. So there would be allocation or deployment structures like allocation. Deployment structures. A deployment structure is like show how software is assigned to hardware processing. So software is assigned to uh, hardware cross uh, and uh, with respect to its communication elements. So it is helpful for us to reason about the performance, data integrity, data integrity, security and availability.
And there would be uh, implementation structures apart from the allocation structures. There could be the implementation structures. So these structures usually uh, shows the soft elements, usually modules, are mapped into the file structure of the system development. So integration or configuration control environments. Mapping to file structures. This is critical for management of the development activities and build processes. Cool. For build processes. And there would be other than this uh, work assignment structures. Which assigns the responsibilities for implementing and integrating the modules to the teams who will carry out. The architect will know the, expert, uh, the expertise required for the each team, and it determines the major communication pathways. Pathways uh, among the teams, like regular conferences, wikis, email lists, and so forth. So to sum up, we need to understand that these structures should be related with each other. And each structure has uh, several uh, highlight points that uh, is uh, that highlights some of the important characteristics, while others could be highlighting uh, different things. So elements of one structure should be related to the elements of the other, and we need to reason about these relationships. In general, mapping between the structures could be considered as one to many. Okay, uh, so that's all for this course. See you in the next one.